Hi, everyone. Richard Carlton here. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker Training. It is Thursday, 1 o'clock Pacific time, and I'm here at Claire's headquarters where they managed to, like, let me in the building, but I'm surrounded by pit bull dogs to make sure I don't do anything unsavory. So today's broadcast is very exciting. If you look at if you go to fmtraining.tv, you can see the upcoming broadcast schedule. For those of you wondering, this is a website driven by FileMaker. We eat our own dog food here. Yes, we do. So today is going to be an interesting conversation about Claire's studio. This is kind of a follow-on to what happened at the Claris Engage Developer Conference about a month or so ago. And it's, it'll be an interesting uh, look at what's going on with Claris Studio. It's my involvement with them to a degree, but it's going to be handled by the professionals here. Never send an amateur to handle it. We're going to let the professionals take you for a test drive. And if you want to support the channel, once again, we're not asking for go to Patreon or anything like that. How about you send a couple bucks and buy training, Margaret? Why don't we show the bundles real quick for that? There we go. All right. So you can buy the training. And this is how you, we don't have any merch. People said we should have some like FM merch or something like that. I guess we could do that little stuff plushies or something, whatever, something to keep people happy. But yes, today's conversation is about Claire Studio. So I've been working with Claris on the studio uh, issue since about Christmas is when it came up. And so what I want to do is I'm going to welcome Bridget. So this is Bridget. She is product manager helping to drive the Claris Studio product. And so there are various product managers. As we go forward here, you will see me talk to them, some of them. And uh, they'll be on various different topics. And, of course, Bridget's mostly working on Studio. There's other people working on Connect, other people working on Pro and Server. That's kind of the Rick Kalman part of the operation. And they're all helping each other, so they're all kind of involved. But Bridget's baby, if I want to call it that, is this one product. That's her main goal. And to help her today, we got uh, – who do we have today, Bridget? Uh, we also have uh, Melody and Michael here with us. Um, if there's more technical questions – I will point those questions to them. But to help uh, everyone out here, so I'm going to give Bridget full fare here. So I was I was a little concerned with like, here's Bridget. I didn't know anything about her background. She was a FileMaker developer, is a FileMaker developer. So she has a history of doing stuff like that. Margaret, her skill set, I think, is even better than yours, potentially. So that's pretty quite a ways along, right? So that's awesome. So I was I was glad that have product manager at Claris who understand FileMaker fundamentally first. Uh, but Bridget knows what she's about, which is awesome. So I'm going to pivot to her. Margaret, do we want to share, let her share her screen? And we're going to start into this conversation about Studio. So Studio is, I guess, do you want to frame it a little bit, uh, Bridget? I mean, some of the people here know about it. Some of them don't. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure how many people on the live stream here have uh, seen Clara's Studio um, or looked at what it's like in market today or when it was originally released. But before we jump into just Clara Studio, I wanted to frame it in the context. Of perfect, perfect. Yeah, where does it fit in their world of the of the FileMaker world that, where these people, most of these people are from? Mm -hmm. So uh, we think of the Claris platform as having three dimensions. So we have the internal facing solutions, um, external facing solutions, and then the external data sources and systems that you have to connect to them. So here at FileMaker, we believe that uh, FileMaker is ideal uh, for teams that can scale to hundreds of users and your problems can be solved. You have proven that over the past 30 years, and we will always continuously work to improve FileMaker. But that being said, we also know that there is an important requirement that goes to externally facing users. And these solutions have key differences from internal. So. First, they can't rely on specific operating systems or installed apps, and they need to be responsive native web apps. And second, these external audiences can be of unpredictable size. They can be large audiences or just scaling gracefully. And with that being said, that is where we think Claris Studio fits into the fold. All right. Very cool. Very cool. And then the last one, just since we're here, we might probably should talk yes. about well, I don't have it highlighted. Okay, but don't have it highlighted. So, so that's the external API. So Margaret, Margaret, you've been paying attention. Test question. Here comes the test. What would be a FileMaker server and Pro and Go and Web Director, the items on the left, the internal facing? And once again, several hundred users. We've added up to like 500 before, before we get it to fall over. So then external facing is Studio. Then what's the bottom one? Do you know what that would be, Margaret? Claris Connect. Yeah. And that's that API action. So do it besides this, we're not really getting in too deep into it today, but it's 
not deep into the connect and that uh, maybe we could bring uh louie or someone else on for that but in uh, tying all of your data together studio file maker or any external facing solutions being able to easily integrate those uh with your solutions that is awesome all right so that's kind of the big picture so everyone understands kind of the, the groundwork and the framework here so all right that being said uh, we want to give you guys a way to build custom app experiences for these external facing users. But starting with a blank page, just like FileMaker, uh, it's very hard to build all of the custom requirements that uh, you all need. So in our development process, we have focused around use cases uh, for uh, building out Quora Studio. So our first use case, um, which I'm sure some of you may know, some might not be aware, uh, but we focused around uh, public forms for data collection. We knew that this was a fairly simple use case, but we know that it complements FileMaker and, although it is simple, can provide immediate value to certain developers. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is a, uh, a form that you submit. And for those of you who haven't seen this in action before, that Claire Studio can interact or collect data and display data, but it talks to FileMaker, your FileMaker database from the FileMaker server on the back end, right? So it's it's sharing data. So it's not a separate island of into into and of itself. It is a collaborative piece, right? Yes. So. Although simple behind the scenes, we're building an entirely new tech stack from the ground up um, and making sure that we can scale uh, this product to everyone. But that being said, um, along the way came uh, many more views, um, including Kanban, Gallery, Calendar, just to name a few. Yeah, Kanban is my favorite, right? <laughs> so, so some of these, but some of these are low, like would be like, oh yeah, that's obvious, right? So form view, Margaret, is your data entry view, right? Form view, list view is list view. Spreadsheet is kind of the table view. Part of my job or part of what I have to wrestle with, and you folks will, is as Claris starts to work with the new terminology, then how does that translate back to what we already know? And it's a big part of what I'm going to have to do in training is to try to bridge that knowledge gap between the two. But Kanban is awesome. That's We're going to see that here momentarily. So that being said, these views uh, are fairly restricted. Um, and we all know that you are FileMaker developers and you expect more. So you need robust, customizable solutions. And so all of these views that I just showed uh, we're stepping stones to uh, Clara Studio's custom view. So all the views that you just saw are now also objects that you can add to a blank canvas, along with a rich set of field types that we created along the way. Custom view is great for when you pull information from multiple data sources because it's completely decoupled from a single database table. All right, can I call a timeout on the, you know, it's going oh, to happen. Here we go. So here's, here's the translation. <laughs> she she gave you the official Claris part of it. So a custom view, essentially, when you're working and building on it, is essentially a layout, right? And so a layout is attached to a table occurrence, which is attached to a table. So it kind of, we know where it belongs. Does that make sense, everyone? And one of the things that we've always asked for in Pro, and it's really kind of hard for engineering to do this, is to, is to have... Of other layouts reference in one layout, right? And so that's where like the card style window market, you see the card can pop up and it lives in there on top of it, but it's really not, it's not really integrated into one view. So imagine a layout in a layout or a layout elements on sub layout pieces going in, but each one's driven by a different table occurrence. They're not necessarily connected. Okay, so a portal without the relationship. So imagine you're on a layout, right? Yes. And you have, it belongs to the customer and it's a list view or whatever it could be. It could be a portal. It doesn't have to be a portal. Forget, forget portals, just a data entry view. Then another part of the screen with another part of a data entry view that talks to some other part of the system entirely. They're not related. I, okay, see that, that right there, that, see, this is what I tell you. She's, her brain just derailed. The train went off the tracks and exploded. She's trying to understand the concept of el elements of the layout that are decoupled from the underlying structure so that, what i gotta have an invoice number from invoices and a contacts name and last name from contacts and not, on they, this... they don't have to be attached they're independent components so now, i can you're saying likely, that i can put fields wherever i want to put fields and the table occurrences don't matter basically that's kind of where that goes i know your head just exploded <laughs> all right we're gonna let well, we're gonna let bridget keep going here but the idea with this is the tech stack's new it's deep it can really scale to big 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 
right? Which is great. But along the way, there's some things that are going to hurt our heads, but it's it's not hurting in a bad way. We're not being restricted. It's like if someone took the handcuffs off and said, you're free to go. Wait, sorry, we didn't mean to hold you back. You're free. The rope that they were le- leaving, you know, the rope, right? You only so much rope. Now we cut the rope. You can run as fast as you want. It's kind of neat. It's really kind of neat. Yeah. So um, what Richard was just alluding to um, is Studio now supports scripting and calculations that provide the developer deeper control of the application logic. Now, I real quickly was going to jump into your story that, go um, for it. just to touch on it. Um, and then I have a, a quick little live demo we can do. Sure. Richard, tell me if I'm telling the story poorly, but uh, as you know, he works with Big Valley Aviation to build out a custom uh, file maker solution uh, to track their helicopter maintenance so that all of the maintenance scheduled and unscheduled um, is ensuring compliance with federal regulation so that in the event of an accident. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as you can see, uh, that's not a simple solution. And so Richard tracks all of his clients' projects in another custom file maker solution. So, so the audience has seen the BVA solution, right? Uh, uh-huh. They've seen it. But how do I manage BVA yes. to, to do that solution is the question. And right now it's in this kind of file maker system, right? Yes. And, and it, has, it has limitations. Yes. And so internally, it's great for his engineers and for him. Uh, but externally, sharing project updates with his clients um, and statuses, it leaves a bit to be desired. Totally true, right? We use FileMaker, and it's really awesome until you get to a spot where it doesn't really excel. FileMaker excels at about 90, 95% of things you ask, and that last 5 or 8% could be a big lift. And Claris knows that. We all know it if we use the platform. So while all of you have seen the Big Valley Aviation Solution, you haven't seen how we manage it. And even I was there yesterday. They were asking me for new features in it. So how do I, what do I do and how do we manage that? And, and could we do it a, a better way? Exactly. Um, and that is where Clara Studio comes in. So instead of having his engineers manage all of the client interactions via email, um, which is siloed, uh, probably an organization nightmare. I know I have all of my flagged emails that uh, stress me out. So I can only imagine. So that being said, um, Richard is working on building out a custom view in Clara Studio to manage this project with Big Valley Aviation. Now to be clear about this, Margaret, you were in here the other day. You were using this the other day. Here we go, right? Yes, you, you were, we were adding to my extensive to-do list. Yeah, well, that's the problem. The customer has ideas or feedback and it goes on the the to-do over here, yeah. For this first video, let's say that uh, I'm one of Richard's engineers, um, and this is kind of an engineering view. And on the left, you can see all the projects that I have at this current time. So let's go into the Big Valley Aviation project. And when I click on one of the tasks, you see it populates on the right. Now I wanna close out uh, this validating mobile workshop space. So I wanna check the details, and I'm going to leave a quick comment saying it's done before I drag this task from the in progress column to the done column. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, and now that that task is done, I want to add another one, uh, let's say to uh, test this mobile workshop space. Uh, again, I'm not the helicopter expert, uh, but I can just quickly add all the details there and it's populated in the new column. This is pretty slick. Yeah, absolutely. So the idea is that you have a Kanban board here. And what I've been doing with Claris is working with them. And then Margaret has, was part of this. And, and we're giving them feedback as to we run into user experience things and whatnot and and helping them kind of build out what would be kind of a, I don't, I, I'm going to use FileMaker lingo, but it would be like a project management starter solution would be if we were building this in FileMaker, the lingo we would use for that. I'm not sure what we call it in studio, but the idea is, some way of having a really easy project management system that people who with FileMaker, they already have a FileMaker license. They could have this essentially. It's going to be part of your license going forward. Claris hasn't, you know, once again, that was part of the keynote, separate conversation. We talked about that licensing simplification. But if you have at least a five seats of FileMaker and you have the server, you're going to have access to Studio, which means you're going to have access to this. And I say it with quotes on my hand, star solution, right? So that's kind of where this is going. And, and what I've been doing with them is 
uh, giving them feedback, like saying, hey, this doesn't quite make sense for whatever. They're actually building this out. And under the hood, it's very technical. And the Claris engineering folks are here to kind of backstop us if we run into problems. But the short version is that this is awesome. And Margaret was using it. In fact, we've added another column to this on this since we uh, since you took the screenshots. If I go over here and I annotate this briefly, we added a column right here for a customer kind of acceptance kind of a, a area in here. So then the customer could we can this is the, what we're gonna work on, what we're working on now, customer can test a section and then it's done. So there's we've added it is very simple to add that. It was very it wasn't a lot of engineering, a lot of work. Very simple within the studio interface to build that. So pretty cool. All right. So next I just wanted to touch on that was a great view for engineering. But uh, what am I going to show my customers? We need a more specific uh, view for the customers. We don't want them to go and be able to see all of the projects. So here you can see on the left, all of the tasks that were just in the Kanban are now on the left-hand side uh, populating a list view. And now when I click on one of these tasks, you can see uh, the details populate on the right and I can easily approve or reject the status as a client, uh, look at attachments. And as you can see at the top, as this project continues to grow, as Margaret said, her endless list of tasks, uh, yeah, you, Margaret. Can, <laughs> you can uh, add custom filters and search um, this list uh, on the left to make it simpler. Yeah, Mar Margaret, you have not seen this screen yet, right? Because Margaret's been living. No, I was not aware that the screen existed yet, but I've been living well, in I, the. I'm not trying to overwhelm you as a as a kind of a junior to intermediate developer. I'm 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 giving you the pieces that you need to worry about, but we want to give this to the customer. So can you talk about what's going to happen in terms of us giving us the customer? I mean, we're going to give them, how are we going to give them access to this? Well, you're way ahead of me. Oh, I'm sorry. So, Never mind. <laughs> so just like we have with a just form views today, um, now we are working on being able to share custom views publicly. So with a unique URL, uh, you can share this uh, customer portal uh, however you want to your client, and they can check this uh, in real time uh, when they want to and stay up to date on their projects. Which is awesome, right? So they would let's see something they need to test. They test it, they come back and mark it, either approve it or reject it or whatever their, their feedback is, right? Sometimes as a developer, like I was down there in person yesterday, and it, and it was good to be there and actually walk through them with them on the computer because one of them didn't even understand how basic kind of navigational things was working. And, and, and either I had failed or they weren't a very advanced user. And it was a combination of both. I hadn't quite done something perfect. So, you know, having that in-person time, whether it's through a Zoom call or a go to meeting or something or face to face is always valuable. And sometimes we talk in this live streams about tips and tricks to be a great developer and what you might want to do beyond the product, right? Customer yeah. management, setting customers' expectations, managing it when they pull the plug out of the wall, which they had a tantrum uh, two weeks ago and did that on the client because they got stuck. And anyway, but it was a funny conversation. Yeah, yeah. The customers have can have a tantrum and you have to learn how to manage that. So, Margaret, do we have questions, Margaret, because I know Margaret is watching the screen over there. What questions do you have? We do have questions. So... Question from NJ. How much data is it possible for FileMaker and Apple to collect from customer solutions created in Studio? Okay, let me ask a clarification on that. You're talking about how much data in terms of size or how much data because it's maybe privacy related? Like you, the way you phrased that, was it, what's the limiting? Is it size or you think, Margaret? Privacy. Nancy, I have not heard Claris talk about that. I'm not sure they're fully prepared to discuss that. But if, for example, th something you wouldn't want to do as best practice is that we don't generally capture credit card numbers and stick them in a database yeah. because that's a security thing. But what if someone wants to do that? What's going to stop them? I don't know. I don't think Claris is really the police here. That being said, it is Apple technology. And even though we're using this, technically it would be kind of an Apple server. So that's an interesting question. I think we'll kick that can down the road and pick that one up. In terms of data size, we're talking Mongo, right? So the back end yeah. is this big data system. Yeah. So it's, it, take a lot. It's a lot more powerful, strictly speaking, than the FileMaker engine. Yeah, I, the back end is built on MongoDB um, with the goal in mind that uh, we want it to uh, perform well um, and scale uh, elastically. So uh, a lot of the stuff and we're doing with Studio right now is handling um, a lot of the stuff on the back end so that the user doesn't have to do it um, up front. 
All right, Margaret, next question. Yes, could you share the URL and also require authentication? All right, here we go. So that was, she told me I was jumping the gun. So there's the question that was coming for you. How do you share that view? Yeah. What's the, what, what's your plan for that? Currently, you can be a team manager or a team member um, within Studio and uh, you can share a view publicly. Um, that being said, uh, obviously this uh, custom view isn't in production yet um, and we're working. We know that uh, roles and permissions is something we need to flesh out more, but if uh, you wanted them to have access to the custom view and they needed a password, uh, you could supply them with a Clara's ID and have them be a team member. So the idea, and I'm just going to talk, this is where I have to be, tread very carefully and not get in trouble. So what I expressed to Claris is that they have this view linky thing that they've had since day one, but I want to restrict to people like BVA to only see the BVA one. And if it was another customer, they could only see their project record. And the trick is I really don't want to run the customers through the meat grinder of, of Claris ID. That being said, my understanding is that Claris ID is being pretty high on the party list is to make it more friendly and less um, sharp edges on it, smooth it out, make it a more happy experience, right? So, um, and I just know that's in progress. Um, and it's, on pro when I say in progress, everything we're talking about here is like weeks. It's, it, they're running very fast here at Claris. I don't know that I know any plans that are beyond a couple months away, right? It's all things that are happening, but in, you know, in a month, it's going to be better. And a month after that, it'll be way, way better. So, do we have another question mark? We or? do. Could this work as a public web web page? Yes, it could. Um, I, I would probably like to know more about what a specific web page um, you're looking for. It's kind of a loaded question, yeah. but 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 there's no it scales, and it can show stuff in a browser and kind of unlimitedly. So the question is is yeah. the question is from Ken. So I'm assuming he's referring to his balloon fiesta event which is the yeah, massive but, event that he has where people sign up for stuff. So here's a classic. So this is another aviation thing. So hot air balloon, I always give Ken a hard time about this. He flies hot air balloons, right? Uh -huh. And his high, his idea of a high-speed pass over an air t tower is five miles an hour. He doesn't go very fast. And where I'm like yeah. rocketing and then people go faster than me, so we're always going back and forth. But he does this huge event and they do registrations where they bring pilots in and they capture their their pilot driver's license, pilot license. They do medical. They do insurance. It's like if you were going to race your own personal car, they want to see your insurance. You're legal to drive. You sign a waiver that you won't you know, sue anyone or whatever. Yeah. They do all this and they put this conference together. So they would make that those forms public. So can this do that? Yes. It was an easy answer for you. I'm sorry. I threw a, a giant softball to you. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 it's uh, public forms, Ken, unlimited. It scales bigger than FileMaker. So the idea is that, that it captures the data in, in in studio and the Mongo back in. Then behind the scenes, automagically, and I'm going to wave my hands here, automagically, the data is shared with your FileMaker server, with your FileMaker database. So he, Ken has a 10 or 12 pack of FileMaker, his own FileMaker server. He manages all, and he's a pretty established developer. He's somewhere between an intermediate and advanced developer. But he doesn't do web forms. So once again, it's that sweet yeah. spot with Studio where web forms would be really useful, right? Do you see a lot of people asking about this? Yes, uh, we do. And that's uh, we do have, uh, that's why we had forms uh, as our first use case is we know in FileMaker that's an extremely heavy lift and the licensing doesn't quite support it. So being able to collect uh, data from the web um, is, uh, we know, an important use case. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, Margaret, next More question. More questions. Yep. Here we go. They uh, got questions. If in Ken's example, a pilot fills in the form, can they go back and edit or update their own record? So they're asking, uh, real quick, uh, they're asking the question about if they do a submission, can they come back and do an edit on their own? Eventually, I'm assuming it would support that. I don't know when, uh, because they'd have to have their own like log on and their own record security, record level security. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I would say I don't. That's not supported at the moment, um, but in the future. Um. So Ken, what I've been pushing on to do is make sure that on a project record, which is just kind of a record in the database, that a link can be given to that person even via email. But send them a link, and then they, when they log in, they don't have to go through a bunch of credentials. It just logs them into that one record, and it's secure, right? So this is no different than that. 
once again, this is all stuff that's active. I'm using this, right? So the BVA thing I'm actively using, I haven't totally turned my customers loose on it yet because I want these are the people that get frustrated. They pull the plug on it. So I want to make sure as many of the rough edges are sanded down on it beforehand. But um, I'm, I'm being serious, all right? I mean, you get an old guy who's 70, it works my way. It only works my way. Pulls the cord out of the back of the computer. I fixed that. Tell Carlton to get it together, right? <laughs> Literally, that was the conversation. People think I'm making this up. It's all true not so much a question but an interesting point good idea i can tell you that private schools really need help with this kind of stuff and it could be a huge thing for fmp that is a great point and i think we are looking into some of that stuff yeah absolutely the claris claris is actually big in education in general right now more than they have been previously all right so you want to if margaret's had a question you want to keep pushing along on your presentation or are we out of material here and no i have some more stuff we can uh so okay cool yeah coming back to your yeah i know we derailed your presentation i'm very sorry about that but that's what happened live audience right yeah. so yeah no but uh let's just take a look at how something like this is built in studio and that is where the power really lies um as you can see none of it's hard-coded under the hood uh through scripting studio allows the developer uh to program for events on the ui and implement custom logic within the view all right, so translation, when they say program for events on the UI, that's script trigger, just script trigger, events. She, she, she didn't use the word script trigger. That's what she meant if she was talking <laughs> file. If she was talking file maker, she would, that's, that's a translation. Yeah. So I'm sorry about that's I'm, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. There we go. No, that's a good call out. I, I just want to be clear in saying this and demoing this. Uh, Studio, we're not built, trying to build a project management tool. Uh, but instead, project management was a complex enough test bed to guide us in the development of the right building block that would deliver the flexibility that you all expect uh, from Claris. Can you, use, I have a request that if you could zoom in so we can see Studio in all of its glory, even more like Command Plus a bit, maybe? Uh, okay, well, I actually was going to jump to just a quick little fun live demo. If oh, okay, in that, that case, never mind. So another question, Margaret, while she's working on this real quick. So other questions, because the idea with this is that we haven't seen the back end of this yet in terms of it talking to FileMaker, but it definitely, definitely does that. In terms of when I say file, talking to FileMaker, it's talking to FileMaker server, exchanging data. Like you could have it for, for Hot Air Building Kin, you could have a, a, a table of pilot registrations, right? That would be the stuff that's interacting with Mongo. And then you could write a script that could move that over maybe to the FileMaker side and then do all your manipulation in like, I, listen, I, best practices on this is still to be determined, but you could have a table that interacts and syncs with Mongo, which is what's going on. And then you, you could copy or move that down. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say the word copy and paste. Understand that probably don't want to use really copy and paste commands, but copy and paste data out of the table that's syncing with Mongo and move it into a FileMaker area where you would manage their registrations, right, is the idea. So Yes. I have one last question before Bridget can launch into her wonderful demo. Uh, someone is asking, is this meant to replace FileMaker WebDirect? Not currently. Um, if at some point Clara Studio were to functionally be able to do everything WebDirect would do, um, then potentially, but we're not trying to make a direct replacement. We're not trying to compete with FileMaker. Um, like I said, this we're focusing on kind of external audiences um, and having a scalable performance um, web application. Yeah, I think this is uh I think this is going to get better and better but in the near term near term being probably the next couple of years anyway is that uh is that WebDirect will be the client that you use for the in, internal operations in a browser where you need a browser especially Android access and then externally facing web stuff which scales web apps that scale this is where Studio comes in. I mean the, the, right now there's overlap because the same company's working on it and they both work in a browser but that's about as far as they're very, very different right now. Very, very different. So um, cool. All right, back to the Bridget. Here we go. Let's kick off a live demo. Here I have created a studio custom view and I've done a little bit of prepping. Um, as you can see, I have two different paints. Um, we call these uh, sub views. Uh, and I am going to be developing on this second one. So I am going to add a Kanban view, Richard's favorite. Um, onto the grid. Um, and uh, behind the scenes, I have this task spreadsheet. 
Um, it's a kind of uh, just a mix of tasks of things that I had to do for the live stream um, with statuses, priority, things like that. Um, so as you can see, when I dragged uh, this on to the screen, um, it's automatically backed by this engaged task table, which is that spreadsheet. So the right pane there, Margaret, they're following the panes. You'll see a left pane action, right pane action, right, Margaret? Yes. Does the number of columns, is that determined by how wide you make the pane? Um, so or is there a default number of columns? There currently is a default number of columns. You beat me to it, Margaret. But we don't want to show the not categorized column because we're not using that. I don't want to show the not categorized column. So I am going to take that one out. Um, and here you can see uh, it, the columns adjust based on the size. This tech is supposed to work good with response. I guess responsive design is the word uh, sometimes you'll see on it. So it works great. It refactors itself for I, mobile devices, iPhones or Android phones or whatever, right? Because once again, this is a browser, so it's not really mirrored to an Apple tech kind of deal, right, Margaret? iPad, iPhone, laptop, 32-inch, yeah. 4K display, it doesn't matter. Oh, wait, okay. So you have to work inside of this sort of browser. It just occurred to me. Do you have to have Wi-Fi and internet connection in order to get this to work or edit in it or it's develop a, in it? It's driven on a browser. So how yes. many browser web, browser th play things work without a internet connection? Okay. It's a good question, but then as an instructor, I come back and I ask, like, well, for you to breathe, you need oxygen, right? Yes, <laughs> right? So I'm not being me. It just is, right? So now the rub, the trick with this, is the neat part is that you could have an on-premise server in your building, and it, FileMaker server would talk to, then I'm waving my hands a lot, would talk to, to that, remember that diagram she had, the three-piece diagram, FileMaker server could talk through to, uh, Bongo on the back end or Claire Studio and share data, right? But it doesn't, you, you could have an office that could be theoretically offline. They're going to get to the point right now, you just turn on, it works. But the, but we have customers who live out in the middle of the desert and things like that happen. So how do they interact with that? How do you have it sync and do that? These are all the things that Claris Engineering is, is working on. I want to allow um, the in consumption mode people to edit the records and add records. Ooh. Okay, so that's Margaret, Margaret doing all this, right? So allow editing, allow adding, right? Yeah. We have, yeah. Before I jump into the next part, let's just take a look at what this would look like. Um, so next. consumption mode is browse mode kind of thing, and then here it is, right? So here you can see we have uh, these different tasks, and I can easily drag and drop, mm -hmm. or I can add another record. The Kanban view is great, but when I click on one of the tasks, I want to see the description because I can't tell some of them is cut off, things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a group object, group object. Ah. <laughs> and so what a group object does is um, you can group together several different UI components um, that all can inherit from a group. So instead of having to go and individually code each one of those objects, to inherit. So is the group attached to a back end perspective? Like remember we talked about different table occurrence. Right? I'm gonna use FileMaker terminology, right? So is the group is like it goes to one could go to one table and then another group goes to is that where yes. we so this is the okay so a group is this is the analogy here we go translation boop, boop, boop. that is a layout and a layout Margaret that group is like a sub baby layout. So right? yes so we have the view hierarchy and then a group, and then the individual object. Mm, that's pretty uh, flexible. In that group, I am going to add a short text field and a rich text field mm. to add the title of the task and the description. Uh, but to do that first, we're going to have to add some calculation logic to this group. Um, so we want this uh, group to uh, get its record data from a calculation. And Margaret, here you can see um, the scripting UI uh, for Studio. <laughs> so, it, it, do you it, have it, an available list of script steps, or there we go. I was waiting for that. Here it came. I was waiting for that one to come. Right. So, in FileMaker, we have kind of a list of assets and resources both sides. Are we going to get any of that here? Maybe it's in the works. Yeah, it's in the works. So, this is probably going to be a lot of automagical things that are going over your head, but. Um, 
then what I am going to invite you to do after this demo is um, fill out a form. And as we're testing studio, we need more testers. Um, and I'd like to invite all of you um, to give us feedback. Wow. Okay. But here we have uh, the project management. Step okay. Two. See how that works? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. like the MBS plugin. It auto fills for you. Okay. Yeah. Well, Bondlinger so, does a little bit, but it's this is way this is like professional grade auto suggestions, right? I, I actually it's the wrong view, but uh, sub view one is actually the sub view we are calling project management sub view is the one that um, just has uh, some text and the image. Sure. Okay. So, so what you call the name of the object and then you tell it what you're doing. So yes. Yeah, so I'm calling the sub view and I want to call it the Kanban um within the uh sub view and from there i want to code the logic that um uh when an item is selected that record id is passed to this group uh, so on clicking uh one of the tasks in the kanban board the right side is populated uh, with those details it's essentially grabbing the primary window, the object inside of the window, the specific field, and then also you're attaching the information that it's pulling from. You don't necessarily need to have the table of current. I guess you don't need context. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Welcome to the world of training. And this is what I'm trying to figure out how to train people on this, right? So I'm watching all of you, all the feedback we get from all of you. I needed to say this very seriously. Super valuable, right? Yeah. Like I don't understand whatever, right? Because this helps me. Hmm. Somehow I'm going to be involved with training on this. I'm not sure to what degree. And uh, as a result of that, I need I need to know where all the normal spots are. So Martin, that's your that's table occurrence the... list? Hmm? It, so this is the source. And I just want to change the sh this short text and this rich, oops, this rich text field um, to be the summary. Okay. And, uh, similarly, with the rich text field, I want this to be the description. So that now that it's set to inherit, it inherits uh, the record ID that's being called by the group. So here, I'll show you what it looks like <laughs> in action. Cool. So now you can see on the right, we have a summary and a description. And when I click on one of the tasks, it's populated on the right of the details of that task. So Okay. So wait, when you set it to inherit, did it grab the ID that it needed from the field above it? Or is it inheriting from the table occurrence that was designated for the little, what do what'd you call them, blocks? The information inside it is coming from the record ID. Okay, got it. That was that part of that calculation on the right side. No, Marty. no, I got that. I'm, I got the calculation. The calculation was only for the... For that whole area over there on the right. Oh, it is for the whole area. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I thought that you put the calculation to a specific field, so I was extra confused as to how the field knew it was inherited. I'm pretty sure field. you're the only one here who was confused by that. I'm pretty sure no one else in the live stream had any questions about that whatsoever. Do we have questions, Margaret, along the way? Uh, yes. About uh, 5,000 of them? Not 5,000. Just having people talking. Uh, this looks like Power Apps, but nicer. This looks a little bit like JavaScript. Um. I would relate it to clicking on a, okay, someone saying, yeah. Okay, just people like processing the information. There's not questions, there's people processing the information through their own ways, so that makes sense. So they're uh, talking back and forth. Yes, yeah. so that was kind of uh, the premise of the demo here. I can show you as well. So uh, using that logic, you can do a lot of different things. You could show more assignee priority um, and here uh, is another view where uh, here we have a sprint spreadsheet where the sprint is then related to a certain ta a task is related to a certain sprint. Um, and you can add custom filters. So uh, I'm not going to go through and code this one out. Um, but this Kanban board uh, is set. Oh, OK. Hold on. Margaret, read that one down is there. blank. So is that like is empty? Yes. OK. So if it's blank, then you're going to do something with the sub view. So if it's blank, it shows all of um, the sprints. Um, uh, but if it's selecting a certain sprint, it only shows the tasks that are under that related sprint. Okay, so then the, this right here, that is a symbol for, is that and or or? What is that? That's Or. That's or, okay. 
so really quickly, I'll just show you um, what this one would look like in production. So here, right now, it's showing all of the tasks, and you can see we have sprint one, sprint two. Uh, but I just want to go to this certain one, and now you see uh, it's the December uh, mm. sprints. And then again, if I were to click on it, uh, it's populated over there. So I that was a lot of information um, that I just... Margaret's head's already <laughs> hurting. Michael and Melody, you anything you folks want to add to this or say about this? I want to, I mean, the actual engineers, like the engine room is there listening, but they haven't said anything. Are they, oh, there's Melody. Yeah. So, you know, we've been working hard, you know, focus on project management use case, but underneath the hood, we're just creating a lot of building blocks um, that is useful for creating a custom web application and, you know, whatever feedback, you know, customers have will definitely be helpful in helping us drive you know, future direction of our building blocks, we call them. Okay, so this is awesome. And so Melody is one of the key engineers here. Um, I don't remember her official title, but the reality is they're working hard on this. This is where when you folks don't see me sometimes on the live stream and other people are covering, I'm down here arguing with them about stuff, right? A lot. Of, I largely think it's great. It's going the right direction. I just try to make sure that it's as understandable to FileMaker people because that's kind of who we are from the beginning. Right. And, uh, but they want you to join the kitchen for testing the custom view. And uh, once again, it will get to a point where as you start to use this, you'll be like, wow, this has a meat. Like I can see Ken, hot air balloon Ken having practical application of this pretty easily. Right. Cause it supports the containers and what you're not seeing here. We haven't shown this, but just take it from my, take it from me that the data you all you saw there can and will sync back and forth to a table in your FileMaker solution. So because of that, then you have instant access to all this data, right? And in FileMaker, and then you can do your FileMaker side of it, which we all, that's kind of how we came to this conversation in the first place with the FileMaker side. So it's not like it's an island. I mean, we didn't really demonstrate that, but we only had an hour and we're going to run over probably. But Melody, uh, this is great. So having people join the group is is what you want? Yes. I don't see any technical questions. I do see people saying this is starting to look like a low slash no code environment. I really like where Claris is going. I see lots of potential, so. Yeah, and their heart's in the right spot, and they understand that it's, you know, it's getting better. I think this is going to be super functional for customer-facing stuff, at least for me, probably within the next six weeks or so. I, when am I going to turn it loose with BVA? Once again, when can you turn it loose with a 70-year-old who's really grumpy or several 70-year-olds? And I'm not picking on anyone here, but we all know, met people who, it's my way or the highway. You don't tell me what to do. I'm 70. I was alive in World War II and I killed. Blah, 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 blah. Right. And yeah. so how do you have a conversation like that? So, um, sure. but I, just as Melody and Richard mentioned, I, that's how we're trying to develop Clara studio um, it, for developers. So your guys's feedback and use cases are uh, what is important uh, to us as we develop. So, uh, having these people, having you guys in the kitchen and your feedback, that is how we are driving our backlog and informing our decisions. Uh, and so we we need more of you if you would like to join. So that being said, in the form, we are prioritizing those people that uh, have at least a few hours a week to commit to this and a use case that uh, we think uh, is suitable for what Clara Studio can do right now. Uh, but that being said, you know, uh, it's moving very quickly. Yeah, they're moving rapidly. This is much faster than what historically you've seen with. Well, I mean, we're all trying to get used to this agile development, right? So back in 2019, Brad and everyone got on stage said, yeah, we're going to be doing this really, really fast. And clearly their velocity of launch uh, is much, much faster than what we've seen previously. So, oh, there it is. It looks like it works. So you're in a Clara Studio form. You can sign up. And do you have a little bit of time to a few hours a week to jump in and provide feedback, right? So, I mean, you don't have to fill it out regardless, but yeah. if you have time, um, if you have time, let them know, right? So, so that would be helpful for them because any feedback you can give them, they take that against, you know, once again, if you have a question, one person has a question, there's probably a hundred people with a question, right? If, if, if I get the same question three or four times and I know that it's a burning issue and I really have to address it yep. and they work the same, she's over here going, yep, 
Yep, it's they under uh, product management specifically. They that's what they do. They take the temperature people and they figure out what they like, what they don't like, or works well if they're screaming and crying. Right. Uh, I also just sent the other link just to the Kanban board and the records. Um, oh, so you can play with that. So they could play with adding records. I'm going to once uh, again request that it's uh, all oh. safe for work stuff, folks, everyone, just so you know. We're trusting you to behave yourselves. Margaret's laughing, yeah. With that being said, are there any last questions, comments? Last question we're coming but we blew the whole hour here. I had no idea what would happen. This is good engagement. It's starting to become good, right? That's kind of my thought, starting to become good. And it's like, okay, this is great. Because it can solve some interesting problems. Is it, is it going to cure cancer? Eh, probably not. But is it solve a missing gap in easily deploying a web app? At least in my case, project management. I don't have to build it. You know, we could build it in FileMaker, but then it would run in FileMaker, and I would spend a lot of hours coding it. And if you could drag and drop this thing with a little couple snippets of those calculations that you saw, Margaret, that would be mm -hmm. really, really interesting. So anything finally from, from you, Bridget, on this? Um, no, like I said, I think just signing up for the kitchen because as we're be starting to scale studio, um, we need everyone's feedback and thank you for having me on the live stream. There we go. All right. Yeah. Well, once again, from Claire's headquarters, our live stream, Margaret, we good? We're going to run the new. We are good. With yep. With People really appreciate that. Rick and, okay. Yeah. We're going to add Bridget to this after that. All right. So. Yes. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. See you tomorrow. No.